I probably had a little bit too much fun with attributes in this example, but I just wanted to show you that you can pretty much put any type of attribute you want on anything you like. You can see here I have me victim, this class me victim, and me attribute we've seen in previous videos to this. And I've tagged me victim with me attribute here, and I've tagged the property with me attribute, and I've tagged the getter part of the property and with the me attribute, and I tagged an event with me attribute. Me field I've tagged with an attribute, and this method I've tagged with an attribute. Now you can also tag the return value of the method with an attribute. And here I'm tagging the parameter with an attribute, and watch this down here. I'm going to hit Control Shift B. Yes, it builds just fine. Let's let's uh, look at the missile again here. You, well, you're going to see me attribute all over the place here. I think I might, here here's me attribute, right? And yeah, I, you know I, we could search for this. Control C, Control Home, Control F, Control V, and we'll find me attribute all over the place. So. Here, here's the assembly. I know we haven't talked much about assemblies, but you can kind of think of them as DLLs. That's generally safe. DLLs or EXEs. .NET DLLs or EXEs. Um, the attribute is now a custom attribute on the assembly. And then, let's, what's another one? Here's the here's the actual declaration for me attribute. And going down, get past that. Dot custom me attribute. Uh, we've tagged that onto the class. That's what that is. Let's find what else. Uh, yeah, just it's all over the place here. So you can have fun with that. Uh, generally, I don't ever have to go this far. I've tagged a lot of attributes on top of classes, and I've even tagged them on several properties, but never as far as the return value or on the parameter. Once in a while, I may do a field and maybe a method for sure. We did the example where we were using the, we were building a test framework and we tag the methods but I just wanted to show you that it's possible you can tag attributes pretty much wherever you want now generally attributes have a very specific purpose and the purpose will be tag it onto a class or maybe tag it onto a property but don't tag it anywhere else and so what you can do is inform the compiler as to how you want this attribute used and the way you do that is by stuffing extra data inside your assembly and the way you do that we've seen already is by using an attribute Okay, there's a special attribute called attribute usage, which you could certainly look up at runtime if you wanted to, but generally this attribute is built for the compiler and it takes an attribute targets enum, and if I type attribute targets dot, you can see all of the different things you can tag an attribute to. I haven't done all of them in this example, but I've done a lot of them for sure, like I didn't do a generic parameter, for example. So let's say we just wanted to restrict me attribute to being just on classes. Then I would say attribute targets dot class, like so. And then if we build this, it'll say, hey, attribute me is not valid on this declaration type. I can't use it here. And I'll get rid of that. Looks like the compiler didn't catch them all yet. I probably have to remove a few and then hit Control Shift B again. And oh, look, there's six more. And, Hopefully you're getting the idea that I've restricted me attribute to only be able to be used on classes, so I can no longer do it all over the place. Let's see if I got them all. Looks like I missed one. Oh, right here. I've t I've tagged the assembly with me attribute, and this is this one's actually kind of interesting because I have to say assembly with a colon here, and it has to be the first thing in a file. Generally, if you're going to tag, oops, if you're going to tag an assembly with an attribute, you put all these in a separate C-sharp file, but you can certainly do them in the same file as everything else. It just has to be at the top um, underneath the, the using statements. But anyway, attribute targets class, we've, we've uh, if I get rid of this one, I'm going to comment that out, though. I think we'll, we'll come back to, well, maybe we'll do that in a separate video. Let's focus on the attributes targets for now. I believe we got them all. Yay, we're still building. That's good. Now, what if I wanted an attribute to be applied to more than and one thing, just a class or maybe a field as well. We can definitely or these together. Attribute targets dot. Let's do field. And now it's quite possible for us to do me like so and build that and the build succeeds. If you're not familiar with this syntax, go watch the enums videos. Basically, I'm combining two values into a single enum value, but that's that's a different video for a different time. Go review that 
if necessary. So all the attributes we've used up to this point have been custom attributes. We've kind of used them however we wanted to. It was up to us. I do want to point out that this attribute, although we could look it up at runtime, it's a special attribute known to the compiler. There's other attributes that we'll cover in separate videos. There are a few more options for parameters. There's a couple name parameters for attribute usages. One is allow multiple and the other is inherited. Uh, in this video, I'll just touch on the allow multiple. Basically, it is exactly what it says. What if we want to allow the attribute to be applied more than just once? Maybe there's a certain attribute that takes some arguments and we apply them several, several times, but then we'll have multiple arguments. I could see a scenario like that possibly, but I think the default for that is false. If I come here and try to apply my me attribute twice, I'll get a compiler error saying, hey, duplicate, duplicate, can't do that. And so, so if we come up here and say, allow multiple, it's true. And then build, it says, oh, what's the, what's the, oh, whoops, field, allow multiple is true. Build succeed. Very cool. And just on that note, actually, now that we're able to apply multiple, I'm going to say type of me victim dot get custom attributes and that'll return the array oh yeah type faults there again i think i'll do that in the next video explain why i need that but uh get custom attributes and so that'll create the array of custom attributes on here notice we have two of them and if we give this thing a constructor that trait oh, come on control enter and let's trace the constructor me attribute. It's kind of hot today. I'm not thinking too straight. So hopefully we'll see the constructor run twice because we applied the attribute twice. So we run that. And hey, look at that. Multiple constructors. I can go all day long and have a heyday. Obviously, this is worthless what I'm doing, but it brings home the point. If you want to if you want to apply multiple attributes <coughs> to a single class, and it doesn't have to be the same attribute, but you can uh Put them all in the same level of brackets here. The compiler is happy with that syntax. And I have me attribute applied here four times, and then we have me attribute there like so. So anyway, I hope that's kind of give you an idea of attribute usage, uh, the various things you can do, the various restrictions you can do. For example, when we were building the test framework, remember I had the one attribute that I wanted to be on the test suite, and then I was I built another one like test method and I only wanted that to be on methods and so that would be a very appropriate time to put the attribute usage on top of my attribute and say hey this one's only for classes because it's going to define the class as a test suite and then another case with the test method say hey only al allow this attribute to be applied to methods just to sort of maintain sanity there